In this video, we're going to be installing the multifunction switch, the turn signals with the flasher relay, and the brake lights on the Tide car. Um, I'm really hoping that it doesn't get too tedious with the little bits of information on the wiring and all that stuff because all that can get kind of boring. Um, it's one of the reasons why I kind of split this up into uh, two or three videos instead of just the one because I didn't want it to get uh, really long-winded. And uh, if you know me, that can be a problem. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video and uh, let me show you how I did it. I've got the diagrams here. I'm thinking because this is all LED and it's not gonna be pulling a whole bunch of current, I was going to wire this thing in with a bunch of relays and everything that I have here, but, uh, and fuses and all that, but you know, this thing seems pretty beefy. Like it's not gonna be able to, uh, it's not gonna have any trouble handling uh, just some LEDs, because this is one of those old muscle car ones. I don't think these are even supposed to go to any relays. But, um, so I'm just gonna wire it up without them. And if the switch goes out, it goes out. I think it was like not, not even 20 bucks. So uh, we'll just do it like that. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. If it blows a fuse or catches fire, I have a fire extinguisher. I don't know. Um, I'm just going to wire it up like that. And it, I think it should be okay. That's, of course, it's going to be the easiest way to do it. Um, but if I, and if I need relays in the future, it's not like it's that hard to hook them up. I could just put them all in the trunk and it's not a whole lot of wiring. So. Uh, we'll just get to it and see if we can't get this done today. All right, so this clamp is supposed to go on here like this, and it holds it to the steering column, the multifunction switch. So I went to go put it on here, and nope, not going to fit, too small, and it's all the way out, and I'm like, oh, no. But luckily, I just happen to have one hose clamp in my toolbox that is the perfect size that actually fits. So, pretty stoked on that because it was a serious stroke of luck because I didn't think I had any hose clamps, but I dug for a little bit and I actually found one. So, this is gonna work perfectly for that. All right, so that puppy's mounted on there. It looks like it would be in a decent position. I'm just, the only thing I'm worried about is if I go to step in the car and my foot's gonna hit that thing, but I think I can get in and out of it without it being too big an issue and then the steering wheel, see how the steering wheel fits with it on there. Oh, dude, it's way back there. Oh, yeah, I'd have to reach to get to this. But I don't think that'll be that big a deal because I do need room to get my leg down into here to get in. I don't I don't think it'll be too much of an issue, though. I think I got enough room to get in with that thing even there, too. But uh, looks like looks like it's going to do pretty good. It seems pretty sturdy on there. Good and sturdy. All right. Okay, so here's the light bar. This is supposed to be the easy part. I've got the light bar laid out here. And I've got, this is the reverse wire for the light bar. Put 12 volts to that and it shines white. And then I've got this four pin connector with four wires coming out of it. And I'm kind of confused about this because this will obviously extend out this because they fit together. But I also got this big old thing and these two brown wires right here are connected together on this one. And on this, they're not. So I don't really understand that. I'm confused and I don't know what the heck I'm doing. But at this point right now, this is the wire I really need and or the extension I really need. And this, this is all just, I think, spare wire at this point. Um, I'm sure for the original application it was intended for, it'd be great. But... Oh, it's two different colors. There's a green and there's a yellow. And the brown must be a common. Oh. Dude, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I gotta figure this out. Okay, so super confused about the wiring because I've never done anything like this before. So I've got this thing sort of wired up. This is a big mess here. I got a whole bunch going on. But I have the thing connected over here. And I have this 12 volt supply that I'm going to use. Got all these loose wires here that I can plug in and check and see what they do. But I've got this flasher here, and it says it's a flasher for LEDs. So I'm gonna hook this thing up and see if I can get it get it working in the circuit here. 
the solid white with the brown stripe is gonna end up being the ground. And then this brown with white stripe on this LED strip is the running light. So if I wire white one to ground and the brown one to positive, I should get running lights. So white to ground, brown to positive, and I get running lights. Cool, so <clears throat> then there's only two more wires really. And that's green with yellow stripe and yellow with green stripe. So I know this is ground. So if I try ground with the yellow one, I should get, what side is yellow? I'll figure that out later. See the left, I can't remember what side it is, but it says on the paperwork. All right, so ground and this signal. Come on, buddy. Oh, there you go. Hmm. Now look, I saw the amber sequential go on. Let's try that again here. That's weird. Sometimes I get the amber and sometimes I don't. What the heck is going on? Well, I mean, I guess it works. <laughs> I don't know why it's doing that weird thing where sometimes it's amber, sometimes it flashes amber, sometimes it doesn't. But let's see if I can get that figured out. I'm sure it just probably has to be completely hooked up before I do that, or else it won't work. So let's try to put the flasher into the circuit and see what happens. Okay, so I got everything hooked up with this light bar to test the turn signal of the flasher. So I've got wires going back. Here's the flasher right here. So I've got power wire going in there. I have the signal wire coming out that one and this is the ground. So this, this little ground alligator clip should energize the whole circuit. So if I clip that onto the ground with the ground of the system, then I should end up with a turn signal on this. So let's click hook it up. Oh, sweet. Oh, <laughs> dude, that is cool. <laughs> Okay. Cool, awesome, dude. So it looks like the flash is working and it's gonna be the right kind of, uh, or uh, it's the right interval too to make the LED bar work, so. Awesome. Okay, so this is how I'm thinking I'm gonna run the wires for the stop lights. The light strip is gonna go like this. The wires on the left-hand side. Now this is the left-hand turn signal, so the wires I'm gonna run back to where the gas filler used to be. There's these couple bolts back here, a couple bolts back there to take this plate off. I'm gonna run the wires in that, maybe wrap them with some white electrical tape just to kind of blend them into that. Um, I don't want to drill any holes in the car, really. I want to try to avoid that sort of as much as I can. Um, but then underneath here, over the top of the fender, or that wheel well in there, there's an empty space in the back up there that goes up into the front of the cab over the top of the wheel and comes out right in this super dark area right here. There you go, you can see a little bit of sunlight down there. But then I'll run that back and then it'll come behind uh, all this cloth here and up to right here. I'm gonna run the wires along here from the steering column and just have me either go back or shoot over behind the cloth here. Um, I'm gonna figure that out somehow. Then I need to run a couple wires up front through the front firewall to get them out to the right and left corners for the uh, forward signals. And that's it, I think it's gonna work out pretty good. I hope so, because I spent my whole day at work today thinking about how I was gonna wire this thing. <laughs> and uh, I, I think it's gonna work out like that, but we'll see. Okay, the brake light strip is on. And uh, I'm kinda happy with it. I don't like that it covers the 10, that kinda bothers me. I couldn't put it all the way up at the top because then I couldn't get the bolts tightened up underneath. But I used locking nuts on these also, so they're not gonna be coming off anytime soon. And they were a really good fit on there. So, it cuts right through the tide symbol, which I don't like that either. But then the license plate's gonna go here, so the whole thing's gonna be covered up anyway. So, it doesn't really bother me that much. But I've got these, see, mirror holder clips and I'm pretty sure those will hold for a while. I mean, if they break, they're not that expensive and if one or two of them snap off, it's not really that big a deal. I can just replace them. It's not like the whole light's gonna come off. And now this, I didn't wanna drill more holes to get into the car. 
I don't like those wires hanging around like that. I'll probably just wrap them in white tape, but for right now, they're just sort of pinched in between this, wrapped in electrical tape. I'm hoping that that holds together. It looks kind of janky, I don't really like it, but um, maybe someday in the future, I'll find a more elegant solution for that. Okay, so I've got this wire loomed up. Um, I think that'll be all right. It's gonna go over the fender under here. I've got it just zip tied up there, sort of hanging right there. It's uh, sort of a temporary solution, but this puppy is gonna go right back up there and come right back out this side here. The reach way down in there. Ow. My arm doesn't really fit all that well. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, there we go, and we got our wires. Okay, so I got the switch panel off again. I'm gonna be pulling main power from this bus right here. That's gonna go up this white wire because I don't have any red wire hanging around, it's 14 gauge. So last night, I was so sure that I had it all wired up correctly, and I went to test it out, and it does this. And I was almost 100% certain that I had everything wired correctly. And as I was going over it, thinking to myself, I was, I'm, I'm so sure I had it wired right. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna pull the switch apart, because I think it might be no good. Um, but we're gonna figure out because there's 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 something wrong somewhere I got to figure out what it is because I wired everything according to the diagram um, But I'm gonna take that switch apart and put my multimeter on it and see if I can't figure out what the problem is All right, so on this switch At the blue wire which is coming out of the flasher I've got 12 volts When the switch is idle right in the middle here at the negative Coming off the flasher, I have 11 and a half volts. These are all dead, don't have anything. Now if I flip it to one side and measure, then on two of the sides, I've got two volts. <laughs> two volts and two volts, and then this also becomes two volts. So, and same thing with the other side. Now, I don't know what the heck is causing this? I'm super confused, and I don't know if the switch is bad or if I did something wrong, but I know that the flasher is wired up correctly. I don't know, but this seems completely wrong. Like, this centerpiece right here, this has 12 and a half volts, same as this blue wire. This, this shouldn't be, this shouldn't be energized. This shouldn't have 12 and a half volts. The stock, should not have 12 and a half volts. So I don't know what the heck's going on, but this thing is either no good or, I mean, cause that ain't right. That's not supposed to have 12 and a half volts. I don't know, I'm tripping out. So I took the switch completely apart <laughs> and I put it back together and <laughs> Apparently, it wants to work now. <laughs> I don't know what I did, but at least that part's working. Okay, so for the front turn signals, I've got this three quarter inch drill bit, and I'm thinking that I'm gonna put it right here. I'm just gonna put them here. There's not there's nothing behind there um, except this fiberglass panel. I don't know if it's fiberglass all the way through. Uh, I, there might be this, this steel behind it, but I don't think so. I might just be drilling through the fiberglass, which would make things a lot easier. Okay, so this part should be fairly easy. <clears throat> that 
hole drilled out. Now these, these work like big truck lights where you put the grommet in first and then you put the light in after. Otherwise, you try to put the light and the grommet in and the thing will get like all jammed up. You can't really get it in there. If you drill the hole bigger to make it fit, then you end up with, uh, you can get the whole thing in there one shot, but it'll be a bad fit. It won't be very tight. So you get that grommet in there first and feed these wires through. And then the end of this just gets slipped right in there. And that thing's like a line. We'll try to keep it as a line. Come on, buddy, don't make a fool of me. Okay, here we go. There, see? Perfect. <clears throat> I've got this turn signal wired up there. The ground right there is a good ground, and the wire was the perfect length for me to put that connector on there and get it behind that bolt. And then I've got it just zip-tied, running down across. I know it's not ideal, but, I mean, it's got to get back up to the... It's gotta get back up in the car somehow, so. <laughs> but I think it's like super duper low profile. I barely even notice it's there, which I guess, I don't know that that's a good thing, but yeah, let's flip it on and see what we got here. So, right hand turn signal. Lights, of course, are working still. And then now we got turn signal just blinking away right there. And then we got, of course, those sequentials going in the back. <laughs> Man, this is really coming together. <laughs> I can't, uh, oh man, I can't believe it's got like, legit like lights, it's, that's so cool. Okay, so the last thing, the, the brake lights. That's gonna be a bit of an issue because I have this whole cockpit right here. Obviously, the doors don't open, so I'm gonna have to climb in here. Now, I'm gonna install this brake switch underneath, but I have no, <laughs> I, uh, I have no idea how I'm gonna get in there. <laughs> it's gonna be a tight squeeze, but um, hopefully I can make something work. I'm thinking to do that. I'm just going to remove the seat. Got a couple bolts back here. These two, two bolts back there, and then one bolt down here. And then the rest of it is just over underneath this part of the seat right there, there's a block of wood holding it up. So it's not actually bolted on the other side, but I'm thinking if I can get that seat up and at least just kind of like shift it out of the way, then I could lay down in there, because this will be all open. So you should probably get pretty comfortable under there and then just install the stoplight switch and zip up a bunch of those wires that are down there right now. Wow, that was actually super easy. I had just this one bolt and then these other two and the whole seat just, Came out. I couldn't get it through the window, but I've got it just sitting up there. Should be fine for now. Gives me plenty of room to get underneath there. But this is this the other side. <laughs> uh, they just put a screw through like a block of wood and that's what's holding the other side of the seat down. Um, I think with the three points of contact, I mean, it's like, okay. <laughs> Now, this is the bracket that's holding it on the other side. I don't know that, I don't know how safe that is, but I've got some room to get in there now. Got some room to get in there and work. So I should be able to lay down in here real easy and get up there, get up there and put that brake switch in. Oh. Okay, so. I made up this little bracket right here. You see, and this is gonna go in there. And then there's like a positive stop that goes up through here. And that's gonna go on the top. Hopefully these two should fit right next to each other. Positive stop, well, whoops. Derp. The positive stop will stop the pedal. And then hopefully I can get this adjusted to where it's the same, same place. And then uh, this should be all good. And then I'll have a brake pedal. And then I found these plastic washers. And they were actually part of a, a kit when I got my TV. It was in the bags of hardware. So uh, I was like, they're the perfect size to fit on this thing, which I was super stoked about. 
So, okay. <laughs> That's that. Oh man. I remember doing this back in the day on some of my other cars that I've owned. Oh, I hate working under the dash. Like, <laughs> the worst part of working on a car is working underneath the dash. <sighs> Whoops. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Um. Alright, let's see if I can get this bolted up. Uh. 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 Here, why don't you come with me to the Okay, so. Right there. This is where this thing goes. All this stuff goes right here. Up. Uh. Eh. Right in there is where the positive stop goes. Oh, with the bracket. Oh my gosh, dude. Tight squeeze. Okay, I need two hands to do this, but the bracket goes in here, and the positive stop is gonna go through that bracket. And then since that bracket will be hanging down like that, then the stop switch will go in that bracket up against the pedal like that. And hopefully that'll work. Okay, I gotta put this thing down. I can't do this with it. Well, I'm holding you. I think that's in. And it looks like it's gonna work pretty good. So now all I gotta do is just wire this thing up and I should be solid. All right, so we just got the brake lights hooked up. That switch down there. I'm gonna use my trusty pointy stick and push the brake pedal. Bingo! Man, that's awesome. <laughs> it has a little bit of a delay. Oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> oh, she's got all the lights she needs now. And it's also headlights, blinkers. Tail light should be on right now. <laughs> oh, this is crazy. This is freaking crazy. How about the hazards? <laughs> the seat. Oh my gosh. Oh, this thing's a pain to get around. Oh, man. Everything's working. That is freaking awesome. Oh man, that was a lot of work. And oh, headlights. <laughs> Whoops. That's another thing. Driving this thing, it has no automatic cancel for the turn signal, so I'm gonna have to remember when I'm driving it. And I actually thought about this. I wanted to practice with my other car, uh, going around corners and like just trying to manually shut off my turn signal every time. Because I'm going to be driving around in this thing like an old grandpa with the turn signal on. Because I can't hear the, the flasher going off when I'm driving down the road because this thing's so loud. So I probably spend a lot of time just driving down the road with just a signal on. Click, 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 click. <laughs> so hopefully I can get used to that after a while. But man, I am freaking jazzed. Time to put the seat back in. And then it's going to, then we're going to start the paperwork and uh, get applied for a VIN number. All right, and that's it for the lights on the Tide car. Um, it's one big step to getting it street legal. That's most of the stuff it needs to be street legal. Um, I know it was a long video. Uh, there's a lot of little bits and pieces in there that sort of like add up. <laughs> but um, I'm trying to keep them a little bit shorter than that from now on. So, but I'm really glad that part's out of the way. It's pretty tough putting some of that stuff in, figuring out how I was gonna do it. So, but now that that's all done, I think the next video is probably gonna be rebuilding the carburetor. I also have to order tires and wheels for the car. Um, haven't decided exactly what I'm gonna go for yet with those. Uh, maybe like some BF Goodrich radial TAs or Firestone, Firehawk, Indy 500, something like that. Um, but that'll all be in an upcoming video. In the meantime, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoy the videos, please subscribe 
We're at 250 subscribers, I think, right now, and I'm trying to get to 1,000. Thank you very much for watching. Take it easy, and I will see you next time.